Good morning. It is Thursday the 16th. Yes, 16th of April. Um, this morning, Jan woke us, well, woke me up. Mom was probably already up to a, oh, excuse me, mm, to breakfast. She had ordered in McDonald's breakfast, got mom her, her big breakfast. She or, then ordered three sausage biscuits and three chicken McGriddles, which are actually fairly good, um, which was a nice surprise. It was, now that I'm back to work, that's basically what it is. We eat one meal together and then if mom's hungry she'll eat something later on in the day and Jerry Ann will make herself something either reheat some leftovers or something along that line later in the day um yesterday as y'all know was my first day back to work and I was mildly surprised that the store wasn't a total disaster um, but it, it was no surprise that there were certain areas that needed my touch. Um, as per normal, it seems that um, when there's not a man there or somebody who's willing to do it, the men's room looks like it was not cleaned properly, or at least cleaned in a day. Um, not that it was disgusting, it was just there were certain areas that didn't look like they tried to, to wipe it down because there was a, a small layer of dust. <laughs> Strangely enough, dust on the back of the men's toilet seat on the the tank part. Um, that in fact, the last the night before, basically um, Tuesday night, they did not lock the. Um, the garbage cans in, in the bathrooms have a basket, a metal bin of sorts that locks in the place. Well, they didn't lock it down. They just put it in place. Um, or they thought it was locked and left it. Not a big deal. Just little things here and there. And then, of course, as per usual, um, my supervisor asked me to do one or two little things that I was lucky to get part of it, like half of it done, but not all of it because I didn't get the uh, price tags in place. But I got the little black strip of, I don't know exactly what to call it. It's not exactly metal, but it's not exactly paper. I am sorry. It is allergy season and I don't sleep that well, even though my, my, my wife thought I did because, um, my wife, Jerry Ann, thought I did because I wasn't snoring. Well, just because I wasn't snoring doesn't mean that my allergies or my sinuses or one thing or another wasn't causing me issues. Um, I could sleep well, but because of the post navel drip, drip getting into my lungs, um, I, it, it makes it harder for me to breathe. Um, she, it, there might not have been any snoring, there might not have been any loud, audible wheezing, but I can tell as I'm sitting, now I'm sitting up and whatnot that there is mucus and whatnot down in there because it, it feels heavy and I'm yawning like crazy. Um, but all in all, the main, the main thing that, that concerns me is the so-called sneeze guard that they have up it wouldn't block a mouse, let alone a sneeze. Um, it It's just a very thin piece of plexiglass that has a lip underneath it that so you can like wedge it underneath the register or something like that. It, you know, yay big. I can stand in front of it and my shoulders will stick out. And I'm not a big guy. So you, you can see how cheaply things are being done. 
Um, all in all, my first day back, other than just the amount of people coming through, I think when I got there too, it didn't let up until almost seven thirty o'clock. So that's like what five, six hours worth of, of non-stop work before I can start cleaning. I know one thing that she'll get on to me about is the fact that we didn't go out and get ice and the ice case inside was almost empty. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I'm sorry. Um, there's two people here. We're getting slammed. You had about four people throughout the whole day and none of none of you could you know go get ice um i find that very um biased and uh wrong i mean i know if i was the manager of the store and um i knew there was only going to be two people at night and there was four people during the daytime i would have had somebody during the daytime filled up but that's me Um, so that was work yesterday. Today is Thursday. Um, I don't know exactly what the weather is like right now. I just know it's a little chilly. It's supposed to get up in the upper 50, lower 60s, I thought. 64 is what I thought it said yesterday, but it is, well... The world is changing so rapidly that the temperature, um, the weather patterns can change within minutes. I know there's a lot of states, Montana, here in Missouri, I think even in New York, they had this, they had, they all have the same saying. If you don't like the weather now, wait five minutes, it will change. Um, for the most part, Missouri, Montana, yeah. Missouri, because we're a plain state, we're in the plains. Um, Montana, because they're in the six, seven, and eight thousand foot above sea level range. Yeah. New York, mm, not so much. Um, certain times of the year, maybe, but this time of year, no, it, it, it's steady. It's pretty steady. Um, there's no rapid overnight change or change within five minutes. Um, the only time I've ever seen weather in, in New York rapidly change is because there was a storm brewing off the coast or up near Buffalo pushing downward. But things are, um, Yeah. Day-to-day -day things are different, um, but that brings me to community. It's also something I just read my my um, daily devotional about community. As a whole, we're not doing very good as community because... We have certain officials that basically give us guidelines. Our circ our current circumstances, CDC wants us to stay home unless you're out doing necessary things. CDC also wants us to wear masks when out in public. I'm not seeing either or. I know my store is a convenience store. We are considered essential. Um, I know places like Walmart have cordoned off Areas are not considered essential. So basically the only thing that's not roped off is um, pharmaceuticals and groceries. Um, somebody was saying that then this is in their, their area, which was New York. Um, the automotive section was, court, it was basically roped off. Um, crafting section was roped off. Well, if we're going to be roping off the non-essentials, well... A super Walmart would basically have everything but groceries and pharmacy ripped off. Housewares are not an, an essential. Electronics are not an essential. Automotive is not a, an essential. Toys are not exactly essential. 
Sporting goods is not exactly an essential. The crafting department, mm, depending on what you're going in there for. Because if you're going in there to buy fabric and whatnot for homemade masks and whatnot, well then, yeah, that's an essential. But like here in Rolla, Hobby Lobby, it's shut down. It's closed. It's not considered an essential. Um, the lobbies of most of our restaurants and fast foods are basically closed. The only thing you can get food-wise when it comes to fast food is either carry out, drive through, or delivery. That's good. It helps with social distancing. It helps keep crowds from gathering in your stores, especially our fast foods. Here in Rolla, fast food is like the gathering place of gathering places. It used to be the Walmart um, drive, uh, the the Walmart parking lot. You know, but as for a whole community, we're not do we're not following guidelines. Simple guide, simple guidelines to help keep us healthy, to keep us from getting sick. Anytime I know I'm getting sick and it's not allergies, I basically I'm I'm locking myself in the bedroom, and the only time I'm coming out is either for food or bathroom. I don't even go outside to play games. I, almost, I There was one time that I was feeling so bad, I almost told Jerry, just sleep in the other room. Please, I don't want you to get sick, sleep in the other room. She said no. So, I, 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 we're still in the house. So, but our communities nowadays very rarely gets together to help each other out unless it's like a natural disaster like the town of Rolla got hit by a, by a tornado. The community goes out and helps it helps itself, or helps the community. Um, <coughs> Hurricane Sandy hit. New York actually pulled together and helped each other, helped out the communities. Nine Eleven. The whole of the United States got together, and helped each other out. This pandemic. It's either we have gotten to the point where we don't trust the government because of who's in charge. I think it's all a joke because, well, one, Trump dropped the ball. He, CDC and everybody else knew about what was going on. Trump kept on ignoring it. Um, there was a funny meme that was put out, and I can't remember it, but it was if Trump was the captain of the Titanic. It's on Facebook. Um, if you um, if you become friends with me on Facebook, you'll you'll see it um, in my on my wall, basically. But it's kind of poignant. But the funny thing is, if you were to read in the Bible, like I did today, or I'll paraphrase it. But it it comes from 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 10. And it talks about how God gave everybody a gift. They all have we all have individual gifts, spiritual gifts. Um and if we use them for good to help out the community, everything's going good, everything's good, but these gifts that he gave us are not only to help out the, we're supposed to use them to help out the community, but they're gifts that we can use at certain times to help the community, and I believe that's true, because Factor, granted when my first tragedy hit, that I could remember that I was involved in, in one way or another. And I don't mean involved in like, my grandfather passed away in the 80s. We were in Germany during the 80s. My dad came back to the States for two reasons why. One was for his, his niece's, his niece's wedding, my cousin's wedding basically. And I think he did drop in St. Louis to, give 
the family um, our condolence. I think that was the right word, our condolence. But anyhow, um, so I, I did not get, I did not, I was not involved directly with his, with my grandfather's funeral. I was not involved directly with my cousin Debbie's um, wedding. I've only been involved in two, two weddings uh, from two different cousins. Um, one of them is still married and has three beautiful kids who are now in their senior of senior high school. One of them, I think, just one of them was supposed to graduate this year. Um, I don't know if they're because of this whole COVID thing if they're going to um, do graduations or just mail in diplomas because they're finishing out their school their their schooling at home, <clears throat> which I'm pretty sure Tara's going crazy about because three teenage kids um, running around the house. Or they're taking care of themselves because Tara is medical. Philip is an auto salesman. He's one of the top auto salesman in his area of Ohio, um, which he is gifted with that kind of thing. He's a good, I wouldn't say he's a good salesman, but he's, he is, he's mild mannered. His nature is always joyful. Um, I was at his wedding and I was at her, uh, his, his sister's wedding. Unfortunately, Michelle passed away from bone marrow cancer. I don't know the full story. I don't know how it happened. It was... See, Mary, me and Jerry got married in 2000. Philip and Michelle got married at... No. Michelle... Yeah, Michelle was married before I was, and Philip was married after I was, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because Michelle came to my wedding with her first child. Um, so, yeah, she was married before I was. But, where was I going with this? I've only, I, I was only at two weddings, their weddings. Um, my other two cousins that are close to my age, um, I don't think I was at their weddings. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember Joel's, and I very, very rarely, I, I don't know if I was at Janet's or not. But um, I'm the middle of five cousins, basically. Um it was Janet, Michelle, myself, Joel, and Philip. So I was, I'm, I'm the middle of five close cousins. <coughs> but I have de dealt with five five funerals. Um. My grandmother's, my aunt's, my father's, another aunt, and then my father-in-law. So, um, when the first four passed away, I, I didn't know how to deal. The first one was a year, a year from the other three. Basically, um, it was... My Aunt Helen that passed away, then a year later to the day, practically, was my grandmother, then within a month was my father, then by Thanksgiving of the next, of uh, after my father passed away was my Aunt Helen. That was four four family members dying within a year and a half of each other. So... Yeah, I was a little um, ill-prepared and ill-equipped for dealing with that. Now, by the time my father-in-law passed away, I was a little bit more equipped, a little bit more understanding. 
and dealt with it better than I did before. And I think the reason why, well, one of the reasons why I think I dealt with it a little bit better, not only because I had the experience and whatnot, and knew what to to expect from people around me, but also knew how to deal with those who, like Joanne, I knew that her family would be tore up, basically. So I was able to step up with my previous experience to try to my best to help, especially Jenny Ann. So I consider that kind of a gift because of the fact it's it's a combination of I was prepared for it by the time it happened to somebody else. But it was also, I also think it's one of those things where it's like, what happened to me in such a short period of time was like, here's the shock and awe of it, and um, you're going to learn how to deal with it to the best of your ability so you can help people deal with it to their best ability. Now, I don't want to be a grief counselor because I can't let somebody cry alone. I just can't. Now, I know it might sound a little weird or selfish or whatnot because I talk about myself more than I talk about other people. Well, the reason for that is I can't talk for other people. I can't get into somebody else's head and talk about what's going through their head. I can only take my experiences and my, however you want to put it, whether you want to call it experiences or you want to call it life. Um, I can only take what has happened to me and use it to explain things, I guess. I don't know. Anywho, I am going to sign off because it's 22 minutes into the video and I want to spend some time with my wife before I go to work again. Not really looking forward to going back to work. Um, not because of the factor of what's going on around us, but because after having nine days off and then trying to go back to work and Jan breaking down because she didn't want me to. I didn't want to either, but I didn't want to say that. So, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, um, try to keep them as positive as possible. I do not deny you the right to have a comment. I just wish you wish you a positive reaction. Um, if you have any friends or family members who could either benefit from these videos or just want to hear some crazy person rant about daily life, um, go ahead and get them to join. Have them uh, hit that bell. Um, YouTube will let you know when I put in a new video. Until next time, God bless, be safe, have a good day.